Good evening, everybody. How are you doing? It is, of course, Tuesday. We're back one more time. And the moth just hits me. There's no sign again, is there? Oh, there is sign. That's good. The, the moth is already here. Dude. Now he's, like, just chilling on the desk. Just, like, his little wings over him, like a little blanket. It's like, hold on. What's going on? But at some point, I'm going to need to drink that, so you will have to get out of the way. How's everyone doing? It is Tuesday. We are back. We're going to continue working on this night. We've painted quite a lot of this bad boy on stream. Started last night on the Hellstorm stream, did a load of highlights, just picked out little details like the rivets and so on on top of his uh, hatch, some of the highlights on just the uh, hazard stripes on the armor. We do it a little bit on the OSL back here, making that just really pop a little bit more. And so tonight we're going to carry on with our weathering. Now you can see down here, if we get in nice and close, we've got some pretty cool weathering going on so far. We're not even close to finishing this weathering, but we're getting some weathering down. And we're going to carry on throughout all of the carapace, the front panels on both of his guns. And once we've got all the paint parts of the weathering down, then we're going to start using some weathering powders. Now I know there's going to be a lot of people that say, well hang on a minute, how are you going to seal these powders? Because you're going to throw them on the armor. I'm not. Let me show you something. So these knights were completed, all of their battle damage had been done, all of the OSL had been done, and so on and so forth. By the time that last year's LGT came around because I wanted to make sure that my minis looked cool and were ready to go for the LGT and I'm going to use the same techniques tonight on this guy this new guy as I have on this old guy and we're not going to seal these powders down same as we didn't with this this mini has since been to three different countries, he's been in the hold of baggage compartments, he's played in hundreds of tournament games, it still looks pretty good, don't need to seal your powders and I'll explain why and how we're going to do this later on, so who have we got in the stream chat today, we've got Mr. Brutal, the Johnsonator, he says I don't seal either, that's because you Lee are a boss. That's Undez. Hobo J is here. I'm assuming he's here assembling some Grey Knights. Uh, do you use sandpaper on your models? Yes and no, Dismayer. Uh, I do when I'm assembling stuff. So I use sanding twigs, which are the most amazing thing. You can get them in a variety of different grits. The higher the number, the smoother they are. Right, so we've got one that's quite rough, one that is pretty smooth. This one's like... 200 or 300 grit this one way 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 lower and so you use these guys to remove mold lines help fill in gaps i've got some immortals i need to use them on to just fill in the gap in the shoulder pad so yeah plenty plenty of sandpaper uh hurt is here viking crooked grin i'm doing well dude how are you main unit scratchy peepers it's a name I haven't seen in a while. How you doing, brother? Ventress and Nidge. Okay. You're bit of some paladins? Epic, mate. Epic. I know Mikey's just put in the chat, uh, by the way, Jake, that there are some tickets for this weekend's events. I'm going up on the Sunday, but I'm going up Saturday night and staying at night. I can look for a different Airbnb, perhaps, and cancel the one I've, uh, I've booked if you feel like it so ah damn that what well, this weekend i thought you still had this off as part of your your time off your holiday right let's disassemble johnny five over here break him down a little bit so we can work on all of these sections and then let's go so on yesterday's hellstorm street i started this hey it's no worries man all we do to begin with is paint some black splotches. That's it. Now you've got to be random. 
you've got to get plenty of weathering done, but without overdoing it. Eh? I still want these hazard stripes to be the main feature of these units. We can't just blast the entire thing with weathering powders and call it a day. So that's not on the cards. So I've got some black paint on my palette. Get that nice and thinned. Give us that control. And use an older brush to do this because you will end up stippling this as well as painting it and you will ruin the tip of a brand new good brush. All right, so don't do that. So. Lulu's here as well. How's it going, champ? So, here's a trick. Viking getting his sub going on. Oh, wait, being gifted by Hurtus. Hurtus being the boss right now. Get to the currency and Viking. Viking, you need to spend these memes, dude. Like, you really do. There you go, mate. There's your extras. Get some hype in the chat for Hurtus. Thank you very much, sir. Spend on more meeps. You can't buy meeps with meeps. It's, it's a one for one ratio. Yeah. Zero sum game. Oh, an A cold getting his sub going on. How you doing, man? I was messing around with your guy's logo earlier on. So, when we did the tape for this, let me cut off the corner. We ended up cutting it just a little short, and this little bit didn't quite line up properly. And here's why we don't care. Weathering! Now, now you've got absolutely no sight that that actually happened. Sight for the Saturday preview. I am waiting with bated breath to see the marine stuff we've already seen. Uh, I'm guessing another shot of something necron -y. and because we haven't seen the, the, the proper shots yet I suppose uh, maybe some more detail on the Void Dragon and Silent King um, so I'm expecting nothing nothing new and that's cool that's, that's totally fine I, I really need to update that link as well because that's last year's. So. <laughs> uh, dear, oh dear. We are sponsoring this year's. And uh, some of you will notice already. But for those that don't, I've got some exciting news. Who would like to join me? for a weekend three-day tournament event in the Netherlands this November. Who, who fancies some of that? Jake's like, maybe. <laughs> Jake, Jake definitely wants to come out to Amsterdam with myself and Nick because that's going to be hilarious. Uh, I think Mark's coming as well. Crumbles. Yes, that's the man with the dressing game. Before you ask, because I know you're about to ask. Oh, join you already because I've got a ticket. I know you have, Mr. Brutal. You better come and say hello. <laughs> So, I am in the middle of messing around using GIMP to mock up some images for our next weekend stream, which is to do Necrons. And look at these little, little logos 
that are already on this image. I wonder what, I wonder what that could be all about. Hmm. Well, it's because that weekend stream is sponsored by Rebelcrafts and the Alliance Open. And we've got a shit ton of giveaways to take place that weekend. Because that weekend is our regular giveaway stream weekend anyway. That is the 29th and the 30th of August. God, why was that so hard? The month hasn't really changed very much. We're going to paint everything you see in that image. Apart from, obviously, like, my desk and the sign and the digital bits that we put on there. I know what kind of chat I've got, so I have to clarify these things. But we're going to paint every mini in that image. Well, he needs a base done, Viking. In the space of 48 hours. We've got that colour scheme right up there at the front. It's going to be awesome. going to be so awesome. We've got three of the big camel beasts. Cop can optech reanimators. Death camels. 60 warriors. 18 scarabs. 6 murder buckets. 9 scorepec destroyers. 3 plasma sites. 2 scorepec lords. 2 plasma mancers. A overlord. A cryptech. I think that's everything. And at some point after we've done all that, we're even going to do Illuminated Cesaras, who's right up there. That'll probably be on stream as well. All in, that comes to about two and a half thousand points. Which is a lot more points than our Nurgle stream was. That is so many to do in two days. Nidge. Nidge, it is 110 minis if we count the Royal Warden as well. 110 minis. Oh, because there's five Immortals in there. Just, I need a round number. 105, no good. 110, now we're talking. Is that a bank holiday weekend? God, I wish. I wish. If I don't have to work that Monday, hell yeah. Because I'm probably going to work the Monday. So we're in a stream from 10 a.m. Saturday the 29th, right the way through. Then Sunday, 10 a.m., right the way through till the finish. The bitter motherfucking end. Till we are done. Which means... Monday the 31st is a bank holiday. Even in England, right? Don't... <laughs> I don't want to hear a... Yeah, in the US! <laughs> oh... Oh, amaze balls! Amaze! I don't have to book it off work because I've already got it off work. Fantastic! Hey, the the yellow beard could happen, but I've told you guys it's like two grand to get me to dye my beard. So we're gonna paint that all weekend. And the reason why we've got the rival crafts logo is because we will have about ten of the awesome rival crafts basing kits to give away that weekend. The reason the Alliance Opens logo is there is because we are giving away one ticket to their 250 man super major. Eight games of 40k over three days in November in a place called Utrecht in the Netherlands. You're going to have to get yourself there. You're going to have to pay for your accommodation and so on, but I've got you covered for the tournament ticket. And during those three days, we'll find time to have some lunch or some dinner. We'll make sure that you've got some painting tips to go away with because you're gonna take your entire army to that tournament. And if you've got character models you want some critique on, we can do a live critique in person. Which means if you don't like what I say, then you know I'll know. But I can take it, it's fine. Show the other sexy little promo pick we've got. Look at that. Look at that. Oh. 
my uh, my Photoshop slash GIMP skills are extremely poor, and so trying to get his little bit of gun to appear in front of the rival craft tick little sticker, but behind everything else, is going to take me some time later on. But we're going to give away that weekend ten rival craft basing kits, one Alliance Open tournament ticket, a fifty pound hobby voucher. The mini painted by me, which could even be the mystery box. The box of paints that we've got over there. I think that's everything. That's like 14 prizes. Might define a 15th. Round it out to 15. We'll see. We'll see. But that's going to be a banging weekend. 2K, huh? fair enough. I don't know, Jay, did you know that ink is an amazing beard conditioner? I haven't used it as a beard conditioner. But, no, I didn't. I think I'll stick with the one I've got, though. It smells lovely. Slightly citrusy. So let's go back to our weathering. So we've got those tickets, those basing kits, the paints, the voucher, the lot to give away over the course of that weekend. Use Ben's. I'm not using Ben's beard anything. The last one he had smelled like actual poo. Like legit feces. Was not good. Every time he got in the car, I'd like wind the window down. Thinking, I don't know how to tell the guy. I just don't. I just don't. How do you say to somebody, sorry mate, I think you smell of actual shit. Um feels a little harsh even for me like that's, that's a comment and critique I don't want to give right uh, but yeah. yeah brown beard actually a blonde he, he has he does dye his beard he dyes his moustache line and like the, the, the sort of chin strap esque part of his beard because he's very blonde in the face and every time he does it he looks like a Mexican <laughs> Just straight up Mexican Ben. Have your PC and minis after you die of exhaustion at the end of the month. Dude, there, there is no exhaustion. People that complain they're too tired have just got not enough stamina. That, that's all that is. Like, there, there's no no such thing as being being tired. It's just, just being weak. That's all. Just weak. So some of these we're going to do as if it's peeling cracked paint and so on. This is what we're doing here. So we're just feathering in some of these little lines off at the end. And then we'll block in a lot of that. And the next step is going to be, like you can see down here, just use some metal and trace inside the black. Now when you do a lot of uh, weathering, um, frequently you'll find yourself using a sponge or something uh, and it's a technique I've never really liked because it, it's never actually random it just gives you a slight illusion of being random because the the sponge will repeat a limited pattern again and again and again and that's, that's not random it's a pattern that's, that's pretty obvious right so, because of that, I prefer to paint my own weathering stuff on. But if you were going to use a sponge, if you figured that I've got a lot to do and I don't fancy painting it on like you're doing, no worries. Use a very dark colour to begin with. Black is good. Dark browns also good. Really dark oranges works. And then take your silver and do the sponging on after that. You know, paint it in like me. Just paint the silver just inside the black. I've seen so many people paint the silver first and try outlining it in black. That's, that's the hard way. Crown Blade, I've never said, like, oh, I wish I hadn't done this. What, you know. I've said like, oh God, why did I do this? In a very joking fashion. But I know exactly what I'm getting myself in for. We've done it before. 
the last time we did the full weekend stream with the Scorpec Lord and the Judicia, that one was great fun. Painting some brand new minis, smashing out some very high quality characters for the length of time that we took on them. That was a good weekend stream. And of course it was New 40k weekend, so how could you not be completely buzzed about that? CJ! Brother, you missed the biggest, like, hype up of your event ever. Hicko, much love, man. You take it easy. We got castles here as well. Yeah, we do. Wooden Spoon War Game is here. Want to paint the heads glued in? No, thanks, mate. No, they'd be easy to paint off the, the mini anyway. So, CJ, just to give you a quick sneak peek, everybody else has seen it, so, yeah. Working on our Instagram marketing. Getting ready for next weekend's Necronathon. Yes, that's what we're going to call it. That literally just came to me right there at that moment, the Necronathon. What a brilliant name, Necronathon. It's going to be all about that Terminator Kron colour scheme, man. All about it. 110 minis to paint. In 48 hours or less, we need to be finished by 10 a.m. Monday morning. As long as we are, we're all good. Batch painting the Necron Warriors. Is that what you're doing? Awesome, mate. Absolutely awesome. CJ, if you... Uh, other than the immediate staff, of course. Your comrades in arms. If, if you told anyone about the discussion that we had the other day. About that fantastic tournament event that we're giving away a ticket for. Easy mode for you by now. Uh, let's not let's not undersell it at all. It's a fucking gargantuan challenge, but we'll do it. We'll be fine. We've even worked out some speed painting techniques to enable us to have a good shot at hitting hitting that. It's my honour. Hmm. So, I know there's at least one or two people in the chat that have come into that event, the Alliance Open Super Major. And uh, just speak up now if you're coming. So if you've got a ticket, if you're planning on going, but haven't bought a ticket yet, then buy, buy a ticket. Yeah. For sure. I'm sure if you win this one, you'll be able to get a, a, a cheeky refund or something similar, but speak now if you're going. Super Major is closed optional uh, for everyone apart from you. Yeah, yeah, basically. You've got to wear a full body mask. There's, there's, there's not enough uh, sunglasses strength in the world to block out a naked that. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. So, Mr. Brutal will be there. Matt is going. This is good. Brett, are you going? You need to go back to the dam. <laughs> it was so much fun last time. It was fucking hilarious. Oh, work stuff. Okay. So, for the couple of you that are there, and maybe a few of you that are thinking of going. Last year and this year, I sponsored the event because I like to sponsor uh, and help out good people. And CJ is literally one of the best people ever in general. In all of human history, 
CJ ranks as one of the best people. Mother Teresa, move over. CJ is here. And because CJ is a boss, and because the rest of the guys that run the Alliance Open and the Alliance Armory are also absolute bosses, I like to do what I can to help support their vision of 40k. So last year, we gave away a set of Windsor and Newton brushes. Plus painted up some brush holders for them. You guys have seen some of those. We've given away some of those here in the channel as well. They've been really well received. It's a good price. Good price. Full set of Windsor and Newtons. Mmm. Tasty. But last time there were... What, CJ? There was, there was what? Like a hundred tables? So that's 200 people? At push? How, how many were there? How many did we have? Last year, 158 players. 158 players. But this year, there's going to be 250 players. So, you know, we, we can't... We can't cheap out on the prize, right? Empires! Getting his sub in. That's three months now, man. Absolute superstar. Thank you very much, sir. So, because we don't want to do the same prize we did last time, because we want to amp things up a little bit, I've decided that for this year, when I run the best painted single miniature competition, everyone takes one mini from their army, if they want to enter, pops it on a table, I judge it with the help of others, First, second, and third place all get a certificate. But for first place, I thought we could do with a very special prize this time. Now theirs will be brand new. But they will get one of these. The best airbrush that anyone could ask for as far as I'm concerned. The Iowata Eclipse. We're giving one of these away to the person with the best painted mini in their army. So if you're going, I want you to spend between now and November polishing whatever mini you think you're going to enter with so that I can give you one of these. Brand new Iowata Eclipse HPCS. Accept no substitutes. That's a hell of a price. That is a hell of a price. Obviously, if you don't have an airbrush, you've got some setup costs. You need to go and get yourself a compressor. But I used to use that airbrush on my cheap Mr. China compressor over there. No issues whatsoever. Nick, I know you're going. The caveat is that the best painted mini has to be painted by you. You know, no pushing Samael forward. Because I'd, I'd choose that. Because damn. Damn! He's good. Giving out the Emperor's Blessings every damn day. I'm not sure about the Emperor's Blessings, man. We're, uh, we're looking a little bit too chaotic for that. Just paint yourself now, Nick McDade. Well, you absolutely should. Now, that's another bombshell that we can drop. Well, we're on the subject of Mr. McDade. Nick asked me a question earlier on, which I have got an answer for. Nick said, hey dude, when are you going to start doing those private painting lessons? Because I'm struggling a bit with painting. And I'm getting frustrated. So I need some help. The answer is, 
extremely soon. I've just got one lesson to finish off with Jerry Drop Dead. And then I'll be able to start taking clients. So I'm looking to keep it to two lessons of an hour and a half in length maximum on a Monday evening after the Hellstorm stream. So you can tune into the pre-show for your lesson, which me and Mikey get our paint on, or rather me get my paint on and Mikey just chat some shit. It's gonna happen, right? And then we can sit down get Discord going on and get our paint on. He tries to put paint on. He, he doesn't even try sometimes, man. Sometimes it's just a, I can't be bothered today, mate. So, fair play to him though. Like, when he does get his paint on, he's doing all right. I think that's enough battle damage for the top. Still see plenty of those. Has oh no, we've got a big open space here. We've got to put some damage on. So private tuition, hour and a half's worth of painting lesson will cost you forty-five pounds, which I know feels steep, but that's what I feel my time is worth. Now, for people that want a course maybe what they want to paint isn't just one simple thing it's not like i just want to know how to paint a, a face yeah? um, or i'd like a lesson on getting my edge highlights better uh, maybe a little crisper and knowing where to put them so placement is important all these sorts of things maybe it's not just that maybe it's actually i just want to know start to finish how I should paint this particular chapter of Space Marines that I really, really want to do. Comradeson, how you doing, Matt? Sorry, I missed your entrance. So, we can definitely do a deal for maybe what well, we could be a longer uh, set of sessions. We'll work all that out. But if you are interested, if you would like to get some private painting lessons, then please send me a message on Discord. It tell me what it is that you would like to paint or what it is you'd like to have help painting. How do I get good, Sensei, is uh, it basically just watch the stream. How do you get real good, real quick, is private lessons. Because I think you always benefit more from one-to-one -one coaching than anything else. Because your feedback's immediate as you're doing it. So send me a message on Discord. Tell me what sort of lesson you'd like. We can then work out when we can fit you in. We'll get a calendar going so you'll have your slot. And then the lesson doesn't end at the end of the lesson. Obviously, you know, you'll still get your feedback in the whips and things like that. And I'll give you some homework to do so you know you know how to improve. Rocky's had a lesson. And so if you'd like some feedback, message him. Find out what he thought. Had a shade and drivers like a pro. I can do a lesson all about driver shing if you if you honestly want, Brett. I can give you a lesson on dry rushing because G Dubs teach you the wrong way. They don't show you how to dry rush properly. They show you how to brutally assault a miniature with a brush. <laughs> it's lesson one, just be better. It's an hour and a half of me just whispering in your ear get good, be better, paint better. Don't fuck up. I said, don't fuck up. That's, that's all it is. That's all lesson one is. It's a three step plan. Step two is that, but less often. And then step three is silence. Same Nick with a former Smurf, now DA Judica McDade. It is.
practice, practice, practice. That's absolutely it, man. Anything worth doing in your life, anything, doesn't matter what it is. It could be like, I don't know, car mechanics or painting like walls or murals, artwork, real art, rather than, you know, 3D finger painting like we do. Baden's Lost Arms getting in. Hell yeah, man. Thank you for that sub, dude. Could be anything. Could be cooking. Could be workouts. Whatever. Everything that you want to do that you're fully invested in doing and that matters to you takes three things in life. Blood, sweat, and years. You've got to put your heart in. That's the blood. You've got to work hard. That's the sweat. You've got to put the time in. And that's the years. It's a simple formula. Uh, actually, before we do the silver, let's just do these bits. As we do all the blacker ones. Uh, so duct taping a banana to a wall took years, man. Yeah. yeah. I had to find the right banana. I had to get the right angle of duct tape. But I think the bit that took the longest was had to come up with the most convincing but still utter bullshit as to how that was actually are. It's like Damien Hurst. Like, I've cut this sheep in half and pickled it in formaldehyde, except I've had somebody else do it because I'm kind of squeamish and you know, I don't like it. <laughs> CJ, absolutely, my brother. And can you tell us a little bit about these terrain pre-orders as well? Because I keep up your Instagram page, but perhaps not everyone here does. So you feel free to go full on man mode marketing all up in here. Totally fine, brother. Nick, I'm, I'm glad you had to move the photo of the children out of the way to put that judiciary up. That's that's a kind of commitment we like to see. Although really, you should have just come to that event on the kid's birthday. You know, she wouldn't matter. <laughs> Need that tell cell vibe going on. Yeah, man. Car CJ. Spin it up. Let's hear what you got to say. ABC, baby, always be closing. A couple of little scratches there as well, help break it up a little bit. Next. But wait, there's more, for only an extra. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to own a complete set of Alliance Armoury scenery? Wonder no more? Low Rec 426. Thanks for that follow, man. Welcome to the stream. Love the heat effect on light weapons. Well, thank you very much, dude. Took me a while to perfect it. Um, a lot of the older ones, the orange was way too much, like way too much. Uh, now we've got that nice subtle fade in, worked it all out, got the kinks out of the formula. Yeah, loving it, man. And that blue at the end, man, that pops like a motherfucker. So again, we're doing this anywhere where we've got a little bit of a, a not so harsh line between the dark and the yellow. Just help mask off any imperfections. Weathering, man, forgives all sins. Until Friday, August the 21st, you can get your pre-orders in for the new released sets of Elias Armoury. 
Check out the new Necron and Elven full table sets and our new Ninth Ed table layouts. And of course, the Don't Cut Your Mat table resizes. So I've got something coming in the works for that. That's gonna absolutely blow people away. Um, for the redesign on Necron set for optimized storage and play. Nice, okay. And how much is a complete table's worth? So if I wanted to buy that Necron set to go with the Necron army, what would we be looking at, CJ? The hashtag not doing a Mikey. That's not bad, 120 euro. Nice. And is that with your pre-order price? Or is that the standard price? Give me the local price. Nice, man. That's solid. That's a good, good price for a complete set of scenery for a table. And it's not that bad to paint either, guys. Like, I, I spent 12 hours Paint in their factory sets, some spree lows, things like that. It was it was good. You know, you gotta get a damn good undercoat on. Get yourself over the internet, find some cheap shitty spray. Blast that. Don't airbrush prime it. You know. The, the wood will soak up all that shit. Obviously you can seal it. So Ooh, a cheeky deal. Always like a cheeky deal, mate. Always like a cheeky deal. See if we can get maybe a discount code for the stream. Let's try and really push it. <laughs> right, next step. Get some silver. We got some gunmetal because it's a nice dark silver color from Vallejo. Sounds good to me, brother. I'm tempted by that Necron set. I, I'm actually still tempted, despite the fact I've got like three tables with the terrain right now and I've only got one table. But I'm still tempted to buy your uh, like table in a box style uh, thing that you did. So you had a complete table's worth of terrain that collapsed down into a nine inch cube, right? But the, I'm telling you guys now, all right? It, flat out and you can ask any tournament organizer in the world what's the biggest ball they could set up a tournament and they will say moving everything from a to b because when you've got like 30 tables to set up for a major that's a lot of terrain boxes but if if all of that terrain fit into a box what this each facing hmm Hmm, that's easy to store. It's relatively easy to paint and it looks pretty fucking good. Here we go, here we go. Frontline Ruins Alpha. This is this is the stuff right here, look at this. So this is an entire table's worth of terrain. The blocks line of sight because there's no windows, right? Well, there's a couple in the smaller L's, but the bigger L's blocks that loss, which is important. You've got some, um, I was trying to say barricades, that mean that, billboards, you got a little, some craters, and those craters are small as well, they're like this. Not like the ones we've got in the shop, which are like this, and are the fucking devil. They're getting snapped. Like, fuck those, they're, they're annoying too much now you uh, have the movement penalty in the movement phase but this stuff right here this is legit look at this it, it collapses down to that hmm so imagine storing your terrain of which I've got a box like one of those big old containers like this sort of size this deep one of those is one set of terrain for me 
one of those could be like four sets of that. I'm liking it. And it looks decent as well. I mean, the big ruin there, you could hide a full size knight behind. So it'll cover anything you need it to. This is good. It's real good. And a quality. I bought a load of TT combat terrain. In fact, all of this stuff here, these uh, MDF shelving units that we've got, these were made by TT combat. Okay? And they're a massive terrain maker. But there's one thing that they don't do, that the Alliance Armory do do. That's right, I said do do. And that is cut things completely off the sprue. So you get a load of like bullshit wooden sprues with this because it helps with their like packing and assembly or whatever. But you've got to break them out the sprues. You've got to just trim some of that off. Same as cleaning out the, like a, a, a mini, right? You've got to do all of that work and that takes ages and your hands get covered in shit, basically. Whereas CJ and the guys over there at the AA, that's the Alliance Armory, not the... Automobile Association or Alcoholics Anonymous. There's absolutely no reason to bring that up. They ensure that you don't have to do any of that. They do it all for you. Anyone want to see this new moth? He's literally just chilling on the desk in front of me. If you're moth phobic, then like now is not the time to be here. There he is. He's been sat there since the stream started. Just like, eh, I'm all right. Crazy moth. You have, mate, mate, oh God, the LGT stuff. It's good, it's all right, right? We've got 10 sets of it down at my local. It's solid, apart from those fucking craters. Ugh. Ugh. But my god, the difference between putting together something like that, which has been made to... Uh, yeah, I think this is fair. I think it's fair to say that's been made to cost, rather than the Alliance Armoury stuff, which has been made to be good. It's a, it's a big difference. So, not overhyping it, I don't feel, and I'm certainly not blowing smoke up CJ's bum. And I definitely wouldn't try and promote something I didn't believe in. That got away from me a little bit, so I'll just come in with a bit of black to, to sort that out in a bit. They do some pretty goddamn phenomenal stuff. Need more lump, yeah, for sure. The moth's just getting his tan. That's, that's all that's happening. He's like, oh, this is quite warm under here. And then for later on, this dude's drinking rum tonight. So, uh, you know, I have a little tipple. Why not? So you see what we're doing here is we're basically stippling this silver into the confines of the little bits of black lines that we've done. Now, we don't need to hit every part of it. Imagine this as being like how, where something's hit it, it's taking away not just the, the nice patterned enameled surface of this beautiful night carapace, but it's gone right down through to metal. So not every part of it needs to be silver. It might be you want to paint something its entirety silver, like some of the bits we've done down here. But equally, you might just want this going on. Uh, what was the question? Will it cover the bane of... Oh, Magnus. Uh, it will cover Magnus, but you've got to turn Magnus. You can't just put him flat out. I'm pretty sure, because Magnus isn't taller than a knight. He's just wider at the top because of his wings. Um... So you should even be able to hide... In fact, I, I know for a fact, because I couldn't shoot the fucker. I know for a fact you can hide Mortarion behind some of those ruins. So... Yeah. 
Pro Jam, what up, brother? The big show of 40k. I'll take it, why not? <laughs> you bought the Necron set. I'm slightly worried I agreed to sell my soul because I think it's the Nintendo site to kind of freestyle it. Any problems, let me know. Nick, you legend, mate. It looks cool as fuck as well. First painting lesson. I don't paint scenery, Jay. Spray can. Airbrush. What about edge highlights? What about edge highlights? <laughs> the Undertaker. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. Mark was the absolute reason that I got into wrestling. One of my earliest, clearest memories is watching Taker, Tombstone Power Driver, Hogan, at the 1990. Oh, shit, was it 90 or 91? I think it was a 1991 Survivor Series. Right near the end of the match, Paul Bearer fucking slides a steel chair in the ring. Taker turns him up. Bam! Tombstone on the chair. Bearer pulls the chair out, gets the three count. Hulk Hogan had been undefeated, literally not lost a match in a year. In one year of stage pro wrestling, they left him on the top spot as the champ, not losing a single match. Take it out the belt for unfortunately 48 hours and lost it Tuesday in Texas. Was it Flair? Fuck, I thought it was Paul. Dude, I saw that when I was eight years old. That memory, that is the one of the earliest memories that I have. And that is the actual reason why I always wanted to be a pro wrestler. And what got me off my ass and into the ring in 2002, 2003. Edge height with a four-inch four, four wall brush, yeah. I once got given Taker's last ride to finish by a guy called Rampage. Rampage is an awesome dude. His real name was Martin. He's one of those guys that's just built big. He wasn't particularly muscular, but he was strong. He lifted a car. Like, he, he looked like one of the uh, world's strongest men guys from around the, the mid 90s, where they're just large all over and usually around the waist as well. Viking, peace out, man. So, uh, he, he, was, he was just a bull of a man. You're six foot three, so by the time you got on his shoulders, the power bomb hurt enough anyway. And he fucking boosted you up for the last ride. Your ass is like nine foot in the air. Taking that bump. Oh, there was no wind left. It's proper resting. That's when you're in South Africa. Bret Hart, the warrior. Mm, loves that guy. Shawn Michaels, Taker, Bushwhackers. Yeah. Christ, the bushwhackers with their fucking crazy shit going on. Loved it. Some of my happiest memories as a kid was watching that shit. Ultimate Warrior with the power of shaking the ring ropes really hard. God. I got to meet some of them. Uh, Insurrection 2003, got to go backstage. Uh, I was wrestling in Blackpool at the time and it wasn't a billion miles away. And it was the only cool thing our promoter did was got to go backstage. I'm telling you now, you think the big show looks big on TV. Shake that motherfucker's hand and he's like swallowed your forearm. It's, it's mental. It's... That man is built on a completely different scale. So good, though. Whether we that sponge or hairspray, you, sir, are a beast. No, I just like to do things occasionally the nice way, like the proper way. 
and it doesn't take that long. I mean, we've been going on stream for nearly an hour, but let's be fair, we spent half of that time just chatting shit. Um, talking about November's Alliance Open Super Major, where you could win an airbrush just for painting the mini really well. Obi Kin, thank you for that follow. Iowater Eclipse retails about 160 quid. That's a pretty fucking good price. Just for painting a mini good. There you go. See, we've got these nice little cracks in the paint now. It's looking pretty sweet. A bit more silver in here. This one's a little dark still. And we're nearly done on this. We've only got this little bit to do. And the, uh, the gun facings. I don't know what the, the real word for those would be, but gun facings will do. And uh, then we get to start working on this guy's base afterwards. Uh, oh, sorry, no, we've got the weathering powders to do after that. Then we get to start working on this guy's base. So before we do the weathering powders, what I will do is just throw a quick wash onto all of these bits of, uh, of gold. Because we haven't had a chance to get that done yet. I don't want that to dry while we're getting all the other bits of weathering done. Probably should start the stream off with that, but it doesn't matter. Then we need to work on some verdigris. So we've gone from weathering like chipped and uh, dented and broken metal into weathering gold. Big Show's being talked about as a new kingpin for Daredevil. If you can't act for Vince at the WWF, you're definitely not going to be able to act for something like that. You just... It's a good job the guy was so fucking big because he didn't need to sell any moves that anyone ever did. And his promos were... His promos were not great. He should have just done like a Kevin Nash, a complete Kevin Nash, and just relied on the fact that he's 6'10 and large and he'd have been completely fine, but no. Um... Uh, this is for no retreat, Frosty Forge. It is for no retreat. This is the last one we need to get done. Uh, no retreat is the end of September, so we've got about a month. But if I can get this guy done now, it means that when I'm getting some practice in with my list at the next couple of events that we've got going on, then you know I don't have to worry about things not being fully painted. I don't like painting with playing with stuff that isn't fully painted, just because of who I am and. Steven underscore F underscore. Thank you for that follow and welcome to the stream. But yeah, I, I, I don't like painting, playing with things that aren't painted. And I, I will happily do it if it's a case of like, you know, there's, there's more than just base colors. It's to my tabletop standard. That's, that's okay. But like this guy, before we started doing the weathering on him, that was, that was done to tabletop as far as I'm concerned. And, I know a lot of people would look at that and go, well, that's a finished mini, but to me it isn't. Um, and as someone that's a commission painter, and this being like an advert for my business, then it really does need to be on the money. So. Uh, also like Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Oh my God. Big Boss Man was, was absolutely awful. Uh, then he got fat. <laughs> that's terrible. Uh, Jake was, yeah. Jake was a mess. Absolute my mess. Steven, oh, dude, that's awesome. Glad you made it here from Instagram. Thank you very much. Uh, do you know what I'm, what I'm running? I do. I'm running three Crusaders. We're running three Halverins. That is basically what every good night list is going to be uh, until the meta shifts a little bit. Um, and it's still pretty terrible. You are going to lose the prime. Apologies if there's one particular person here. Actually, no, there's there's plenty of people here I'm going to offend with this. So, Nick, Jake, possibly James, if you're here, very sorry about this. But with Knights, the way I currently see it is if you were going to win the game anyway, then you're going to win the primary. And sometimes that's very reliant on you going first. But, you know, that, that will, will do. If, if you were already going to win the game off of having that first turn 
or just in general because your opponent uh, misdeployed or made some list mistakes, you know, th things like that. If that's the situation you're in, you're going to max the primary. Um, however, if that isn't the situation you're in and the game was going to be even at best, which all games of 40k should be, then you're going to lose the primary, which means you're going to lose the game. And that's, that's the end of it. Uh, for the secondaries, you're hamstrung into basically only being able to take four... Uh, that you can get max points on and that's mostly dependent upon your opponent's list writing and if they've written a list that denies secondaries which you should do then you ain't getting that either so yeah knights are really really bad right now but they're my favourites and I love them they're big stampy robots uh, but they need some significant help in the way of things like getting obsec, uh, getting things like toughest nine, um, getting two up armor save. You know, some of these things are going to be pretty key to making knights survivable enough to be playable enough. Uh, Ogakin, what's the yellow? So the yellow, in fact, all of the, the stuff you've got going on up here, the best thing to do would be to go back and watch the stream where we painted all of that. It wasn't that long ago. We're looking at maybe two, three weeks worth of streams ago. Uh, you'll find it on YouTube. So exclamation point YouTube in the chat. Get a link to that. Um, and you can see the full technique. Because I can tell you it's Flash Gets Yellow. But that's kind of half the story. The rest of the story is really the method. And that's, that's where you get the most out of the yellow. Because it's yellow sprayed over black as well. And so, obviously, there's some immediate, like, hang on, it's not green uh, questions that need to come out from that. So, go and watch the video. You'll get a really good comprehensive answer. We do the entirety of that carapace, start to finish. That includes getting the tape down as well, so you get the full uh, full process. Uh, I think Armicus should have Obsec 5, man. Christoris 10, Castellan Sarastus 12, Acastus 15. I agree with that. Um... I'd even be okay with it if Armager's got obsec for one mini, your mid-sized knights got five, and the big knights got ten. I'd even be okay with that. Because if there's five guys still on an objective next to a knight, then you fucked up somehow. Doesn't need to be ten. Uh, I just having an obsec one means that two guys that aren't obsec just wandering over and chilling out. Oh! Moyle's Meticulous Minis. Thank you very much for that radio. Let's get some hype in the stream right now for the Meticulous Moyles and their minis. How you doing? How is your stream, Matt? Ninja Wolf. Awesome. What were you working on? What was being meticulously painted today? I was hoping it was Monday then in my head, and I knew it wasn't Monday, but you know, meticulous Mondays with Moyles, his minis would be great. <laughs> Here we go, we got Retio Santi, MCG Jager giving that shout out like an absolute boss. Little Deer Arts. Let's see, it was great. Gave myself a treat and painted the Tech Priest for the Blackstone Force expansion. Oh, yes. Awesome, dude. The Dedalossus. He's great. I haven't finished painting mine. I've got a very, 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 very small Admech army that he is a part of. Fancy turquoise robes and copper armor. Which sound, oh, mate, that sounds banging. If you've got some pics of that, and no rush, because we're not going to do our whip for another hour and 20 minutes or so, then exclamation point Discord. Head on over there and pop your in our work in progress gallery and then we can share them with the rest of the community here later on which would be awesome uh hypers with a wire i'm afraid dude fell asleep on the sofa earlier when i woke up i thought it was friday so much sadness now mate i woke up this was it this morning no it was yesterday morning i woke up yesterday morning going oh god yes it's saturday i don't have to do anything yet 
I just had the weekend, like what the hell, but somehow yesterday morning I thought it was Saturday morning and then I had to like, no it can't be Saturday, it must be Sunday and then I realised, no it's Monday. Ugh. Wasn't good. Wasn't good. Never mind, eh? So yeah, my list is three Crusaders, three Armagers for no retreat, and for pretty much every event I go to between now and something new happening. Uh, in terms of things like relics and warlord traits, right now I'm going to spend six CP just going to spunk on every single game to make sure that I've got as many warlord traits as I can have on my crusaders and as many relics as I can have on my crusaders because you need to power these guys up now. There, there's no room for like a half assed knight and you don't really need the CP. Like I used to get by on six a game anyway. Um, admittedly that was before overwatch cost a command point but you get one every turn so that's kind of my overwatch CP if I need it paid for. Um, I normally run as many of the defensive relics and traits as I can. Uh, we run the two up armor save on my Warlord, just in case somebody decides to take the Warlord killer uh, strat. Uh, not strat, secondary, rather. Um, and when, he, when you used to be able to get cover for vehicles, that was so clutch. Because he'd frequently have a one up because I play a very defensive playstyle with my knights. Um, yeah, no survivability. That, that's the thing, right? Slash beard, how you doing? No survivability and no obsec is the thing that kills us. And when you say no survivability for a mini that's got 24 wounds, toughness eight, three up save, a five up or four up in bomb, you'd be thinking, well, he's gonna be fine, right? He'll, he'll, he'll be, he's super tough to kill. Not super, super fragile. I mean, a local IT in Huddersfield and MPM was going to try more events this year, but stupid COVID. We run an event at my local now every month, so we've just sold out tickets. We launched the tickets on Sunday night to our local players. Um, by they me a buy his ticket this morning. Yeah, by 10 o'clock this morning, we'd sold out. Which was pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, there is a reserve list. So if you fancy coming down, go to atlanticgames.co.uk and sign up. Uh, Jay, you mentioned heavy stuff on house on stream. Well, another instruction leak showed Iron Hail. Yeah, I've seen it for the Iron Hails. Um, it's that fourth shot, right? I don't know why they're decreasing the range, but whatever. You don't really need it. It's not the end of the world. We might get a fourth shot, which might justify five points for the goddamn thing, but... Meh. Mores Minis, thank you very much. So this is what we're going to do next, right? This is the next step already done on the other Armager we've got. Well, we've got the Weathering Titans down. Let's just zoom out a touch. And... Bring these boys in together. You see the difference. We've got two different weathering pigments we're going to use. We're going to take an old synthetic brush that we can bash the hell out of and just get on with it. Now, these have never been sealed to the mini, and they won't be. This was done over a year ago, and it's still looking pretty damn perfect. Some of it's dropped off. Some of it's migrated to little cracks in the mini. Both of those things are absolutely fine. Because it looks a bit more natural now. And you might see what I mean when I do this guy in a minute. So you just start putting the powders down, there's a little bit of, it's too fresh, it's too powdery, and so on. It needs time to sort of relax and settle into the mini. Do you know what the, the worst thing about these leaks is? GW have said that uh, once one weapon profile has been changed, changes for all of them. So that's great, right? 
So Space Marine Codex comes out, your Melter Guns now have the new version of the Melter Rule, which is pretty legit. It's, it's solid, I like it. You get the extra two damage at half range instead of roll two dice, picking the highest. That's, that's kind of nice. It's pretty damn okay. Uh, I'm just thinking, I don't have the brush that I want here. I've got one that's been really beaten up. And that's been beaten up too much. One second. So, cheapo, crapo brush. Eh? First thing we do, actually, forgot. I'm just gonna get some wash down on this. Gonna get some strong tone out and give that a good coat. Yeah, yes, we're learning the paints. Um, what's the saying? Cheap synthetic brush. That was the last thing. No, it's gone. It's gone. Forgotten. Little Deer Arts, thank you for that follow, mate. Alright. Let's just slap a little wash on. You'd wonder about playing two big knights and a ton of armigas. Nah, no good. Oh, the Melter. That was it. We're talking about the Melter. Thank you very much for that reminder. Crazy Yank. So, new Melter rules are solid. You get your extra damage if you're up close. And so... Space Marine Codex, which is obviously like that and an Ekron, one of the first ones out of the gates, you're getting new Melter rules. But that then means that everybody's Melter gun gets the same buff, which is great. You don't have to wait if you're a Sister Battle player, if you're a Guard player, if you're whatever other player that has a weapon called a Melter gun in your army. Bam. Straight away you get that buff. Now, it might very well be that that buff comes immediately with a points change as well. you just got to factor that in. Bear that in mind. But you get that buff. That's good. But that's all Melter guns. That word. Or oh, Christ, my favourite Kanak. How's it going, brother? So if you have a Melter gun, you get that extra change to your rules. But if you have a thermal lance or a thermal cannon you don't and so I wonder how long it's going to be before those rules start to filter down am I going to have to wait for a knight's codex of either description either the, the loyalist or the chaos one to give me the thermal lance and thermal cannon having that new versioned Melter Rule. Because currently, as soon as they change that, the very small Melter gun I have on one of my Crusaders, because I had five points to upgrade the Stubber to the Melter, is slightly better at close range than my Thermal Cannon. It's one shot, but it does more damage on average. The fuck, right? So that's the thing. That's the thing. Smithy! Dude, it feels like it's been ages. How you doing, brother? And Reiner is here as well. What's So what state are auto cannons in now that heavy bolts are getting changed? I couldn't tell you, brother. I have absolutely zero idea. Heavy bolters, we've seen the pistol... Invicta version. I don't think we've seen the new version. Um, but interestingly, the pistol version on the Invicta still has the heavy profile and not the pistol profile. So I don't know what's going on with that. It might be that heavy bolters are changing to damage two all over, but one shot. Which makes sense to me. Because that being a, like a fully automatic weapon never sat right that like a guardsman's carrying it. Hell no. Um, so, yeah. It could be that. It could be one shot, could be three shots. At the end of the day, damage two weapons are still going to be just as valuable in your army. 
Uh, even when things move up to three wounds, like Terminators. Yeah, it's going to take two shots, but... But they sh it should do. They're, they're meant to be nails, right? Also, can we get a shout out for Reiner if you haven't uh, dare shoot been on it like a carp on it, mate? Why not? Uh, could be a summer job for you, a sick form. I think, you, know, you might do an FAQ for all the new amount of flamer weapons. Uh, they might do. They might do. But I'm thinking that they'll get so far through and then chapter approved will be where that comes out for everyone's. Or a good smattering of guns, at least. The differentiate between your assault cannon and heavy bolt, it would. Because uh, strength 6 doesn't actually matter. There's some weird stat brackets, right? If you look at 40k from a numbers perspective, which uh, any good competitive player does, at least, because the numbers are, are where you get all your information from, um, then you'll see quite a lot of stuff doesn't really matter. Like, the jump from Strength 5 to Strength 6 isn't massive. All that really happens functionally there is you wound... Death Guard on threes, and you would guard on twos. Sisters on twos. That's that's kind of it. The jump from two wounds to three is enormous. Absolutely enormous, because of prevalence of damage two weapons in the game. Such as, for instance, potentially the new Heavy Volta. Here's the weird thing. The jump from three wounds to four wounds doesn't matter as much until you get to the fight phase. Because in ranged, there's that massive prevalence of D2. But in melee, you get your smash captains going in with thunder hammers, you get your D3 weaponry, which then has no chance of one-shotting you. Oh, Windy Massive coming in as well. How you doing, Windy? Good to see you, man. How are you? What was your stream about this evening? We're getting all the cool folk coming in tonight to hang out. Let's get a shout out and some hype in the stream. For Windy Massive. For Windy Massive. I nearly said Mindy Wassive. And I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> it sounds really, really rude for some reason as well. Blood Angel Nash, what up? Adrian after work. How's it going? Doing some pink crons. Nice, mate. Thunder Hammer's going to be damage 4. Why? Why? Because Power Fist exchanges damage 2. So why is the Thunder Hammer going to be damage 4? I don't see it. I think keeping that at damage 3 makes sense. Damage 4 with things like your Blood Angel Warlord traits, so on and so forth. Sure, obviously. But I don't see it as just like a flat buff. Like Here you are, you've got a big mallet, half damage 4. Chronic Heartburn. Oh, shit. Unlucky, man. Hopefully it gets better. You take it easy, man. Because Thunder Hammer is a good enough answer, I go, I guess. But I, I don't think that's going to be the way it goes. I might be wrong. You know? But I've got a, a good feeling about some of this sort of stuff at times. And that's one I feel is probably not going to change much. Mostly because one of the units that needs balancing that is massively outside its points cost in terms of its efficiency, its raw efficiency, is Space Marine Smash Captain. They put that Thunder Hammer up by 40 points. Your Marine Smash Captain with a jump out, with your Storm Shield, with your Thunder Hammer, it's floating in at around, what, 140 now? You're going to call it 90 for the Captain, 15 for the jump out, 105, 10 for the Storm Shield, 125. So maybe as much as 165. Yet that guy at 165 points, if he's a Blood Angel, for the cost of 3 command points, or 2 if I'm unlucky enough to kill you. Because trust me, sometimes that's worse. Will remove up to 990 points of Knights in one combat phase if your placement's bad and he gets lucky. There, there's no balance there, right? Your 80-point Orc Warboss with a Warlord trait that's chosen, a Relic that's chosen, that is untargetable till he makes the charge, which, if he's evil sons, is kind of likely to do. Uh, and with one Psychic Power, 
will one shot a knight. So you're paying 80 points for your war boss. You're paying whatever for the rest of your army, but you can't calculate that into the cost as his, as his screen, because then you've got a 2,000.0 sum equation, right? Uh, you've got a weird boy. So there you're looking at, what, 70, 80 points, I guess. So 160 points. Maybe three command points if you need to fight twice, but unlikely. One command point to make him the biggest boss, which is all you really need to spend. And then let's say you're Jake, and therefore you need a command point to re-roll Fist of Gork. But that's, that's it. There's, there's so much that that guy does. Uh, pretty general, but it's a bad picture. Fair enough, dude. What did you put in general? I think I missed what you were talking about, so apologies. Jager. Oh, here we go. Damn, Thunder Hammer is going to be flat four damage. That's super shit. That is super shit. Because then that means that that Blood Angel Smash Cap, with the plus one damage, is hitting at five per swing. So it only needs five attacks to go through the Killer Knight. Instead of needing six. God damn. I, I think that's a mistake. Uh, but hey, it's a space marine, right? So smile. Space Wolf Smash Cat and Mask Thunder Thunderhammer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's, he's pretty fucking good with that as well. And how much points does he cost? Not, not enough for what he can put out. And there's no counterplay if you're a knight player other than stay away from it as long as possible but he's going to get the charge on you the only counterplay is taking sanctuary on a knight uh, and taking a two up armor save on a knight and hoping he hits one of those and if it's a two plus armor save guy hoping you get lucky if it's a sanctuary guy rotating and still hoping you get lucky that's fine dude it's all good I appreciate the guys doing me a favour, so I'm in no uh, like mad rush, uh, but it is something I'd like to get sorted soon, and it's something I've actually started looking to alternate uh, alternate sources for. Right, you're gonna pop the wet palette away. We've got a wash down now. We start working with dry paints. Gonna get those weathering pigments going on. So here we go. We've got two. These are my favourite two actually. Got some dark earth from Cromlech. We've got some orange rust from Forge World. Now you can probably get better uh, oranges for this, but I really just like the hue that this one's got. Right, look in there, that's got that kind of angry red orange feel going to it. It's super, super good. And Dark Earth, I use on pretty much every single base that I paint. It's just that really nice, rich, chocolatey brown. Super good. Super, super, super good. Let's put away the good brushes and bring up the bad brushes. So I buy these about 50 at a time from Amazon. They are awful. There's absolutely no reason to pick these up. Other than doing stuff like this. So let's grab these two side by side and one more time. So you can see where we've applied the weathering powders to, again, just the inside of the black. Now it leaves some of that silver showing through, and as the powder starts to fall off the mini a little bit here and there, where it's not being held on by just sort of static and uh, friction, just in general, it exposes a little bit more of that silver. And that's totally fine. That's kind of what we want. So this is a weathering technique that will start now, but it will finish itself naturally over the next six months or so. Just while I'm using your case and being used at events or in games or whatever it is. 
So grab yourself a little bit of powder on your brush and just dot it on the mini. Once you've done an armor panel, just give it a little blow, remove some of the loosest stuff from the surface. Get right in here. And you see on this one, there's a little bit of stick. You know, got a little bit of color in there, but not a lot. Same here. This one got quite a lot more. So you've got that variation. Some of it will stick, some of it won't. And because we want our weathering to be random, this works really well for it. Now it doesn't matter if we didn't get very much powder on one, because we are going to go back in with our next powder, that orange rust. You don't have to hit every single one of these. It might be that something is particularly fresh on the mini, like the scrapes that we painted just there. So I haven't hit them with any of this weathering powder. going on. Uh, someone who needs to know how it works. Some more around. She cost cost more applies in combination. Just like yeah, yeah. I can see that. Having it as a multiplicative rather than additive is great. There are already people now that can't write lists though. Um, and I'm not mentioning any tournament organizers that may have taken an illegal list at their own tournament. It wasn't me, by the way, I'm just throwing that one out there. But yeah, that had to be embarrassing. <laughs> uh, you can. Yes, so you can still you can still take three smash captains though, which is what you can take now. You just buy patrols. Um, so if you're desperate for them, they're still there. It just costs you a little bit more. Guard of it, so some weapons are higher cost for models with a better BS. Yeah, they do. Uh, Marines have it for like different costs for characters and different costs for infantry. And I think there's a few armies that have got that now as well. Um, and I think that's pretty, pretty good as a, a way of handling stuff like that because you've got more bang for your buck on a character mini than you have on a regular like Marine, Guardsman, Sister of Battle, whatever. Um... Smash Captain and Smash Chaplin. She's going to drop in a Smash Captain with. Perhaps going to flat two damage. It's all about the same bus at half the price. Yeah, basically. Um, the Slaplin has been doing the rounds for a while, like ever since Faith and Fury. Uh, I think it's a solid unit. But. I almost like almost any time I'm going to put a chaplain in my army, he's going in the army to buff something else for plus one to wound near his target, plus one to hit instead, perhaps, rather than to go fucking man mode on his own. Because I'm always worried, even with um, wise orator and stuff like that, that the one time you need it when you you're going to make that charge and you're going to win the game, that's when he's going to fail. Whereas losing plus one to hit or wound. That's not so much of an issue because you've got this mountain of re-rolls that's going to help you out with that anyway. I don't think I'm a stubborn principle I play a slow gun line style. Fair enough, mate. Uh, if it comes to competitive 40k though, as far as like your list writing is concerned, principles are gone. That, they, they don't exist. Take the cheese. Take the most nasty, horrible, dirty shit that you can take. Because somebody else is going to.
But make sure your list is legal there. Uh, remember something Dante felt special because the G yeah, I know, right? But that's that's just creep. That's that's power creep in general, and that's bizarrely healthy for the game. Uh, Max Omax Ko, that's a cool name. Welcome to the stream, man. Thanks for that follow. So why is power creep a good thing? keeps the game changing, keeps the game interesting. Unfortunately, we got to the maximum, like the peak of power creep last year when the Marine Codex dropped, and let's be honest, then the Iron Hand supplement that came with it, where we just went, Ironstone what? So, yeah. That, that that was like the the end of power creep and since then the power has crept up uh, because there were more buffs that came out afterwards things like your chaplain buffs all those litanies and everything else that you get uh, for individual chapters you just got in addition See, look at him looking much more battle worn now just for dabbing on a little bit of powder easy So, uh, yeah, Pat Power Creep, obviously, is, is currently giving us a relatively stale meta from the perspective of it's kind of just Marines. But if that Power Creep continues, then there'll be more Marines as soon as their codex drops, but that hasn't changed anything. It'll hopefully be Necrons as soon as their codex drops, and I wonder why I'm painting 2,500 points of Necrons in two weeks' time. That's right, for those of you that weren't here earlier on, on the weekend of the 29th and the 30th of this month, so that's not this weekend, it's next weekend, we're going to paint all of this. Let's head over to the other monitor. That entire Necron army is going to be painted from 10 a.m. Saturday morning Finished before 10 a.m. Monday morning. 2,500-ish points. Let's, let's, let's actually quickly grab the sums. Bring up Battle Scribe. Before we care, I was uh, army body yet, so we're still Battle Scribe in it. Uh, all the crons list. Here we go. Just need to take out... One thing, which is Cesaras, 145 points. Remove him. He is gone. All the Crons comes to 2,505 points. 2,505. That's what we're going to paint in the space of a weekend. We're going to prime beforehand. We're going to get the bases down beforehand as well. So the bases, we're going to get to this stage where we've got some crackle paint we've got some texture some bricks some stone all these kinds of things that and the priming will be done beforehand there's no point waiting for the prime no one wants to see me paint 110 minis for the prime either that's that's done but then pro jam you may as well stay away the weekend once we've painted all of them they're gonna look like this guy that's our test mini. The Royal Warden painted in a Terminator-esque paint job. Did that on the last stream, which was Sunday night. Bit of a speed paint on him, nothing crazy. It has taught me a few little bits and pieces, which we're gonna use for the stream. They are gonna be based by the end of it. The last paint challenge we did, let me grab you some minis. The last one was to paint an entire Nurgle Demon army in the space of 48 hours. And that included these Garden of Nurgle bases that we've got going on. 90 Plague Bearers, 15 Nurglings, 3 Beasts, 6 Toads, 4 Characters, I think that was it. But we did nice little pond bases, 
for these guys, set with UV dry and resin. All of these had wet sort of marshland style bases with real plants, real dried ferns on them. We did that in 35 hours for 118 minis. 118 minis in 35 hours. This is 110. We've still got a little bit of work to do on that Royal Warden, but 110 minis to be painted in 48 hours or less to that standard, which means that every single Necron is gonna have glowing eyes hand painted. It means there will be highlights on every single Necron. Not airbrush and oils and done like the Nurgle guys were. No, we're going up a step for this. So we're gonna paint slightly less minis to a slightly higher standard in ideally about the same amount of time. Now the reason that those two logos are in that picture, that Rival Crafts and the Alliance Open logos are thus over that weekend, because it is the last stream of the month. Sunday the 30th was always gonna be our giveaway day anyway. We've got giveaways to do, but let's just take it up a level. The Alliance Open have donated one ticket to their 250 man ITC Super Major. Three days, eight games. There's a slight break in there, just forgive me. Eight games of 40k over three days in Utrecht in the Netherlands. 250 players. This is one of the biggest events in Europe. If you're a competitive player, you want to be there, and I will give somebody a ticket. Not only will I give them a ticket, was it seven games? Shit, I thought it was eight. I really thought it was eight. Are you sure? I was positive. Maybe it used to be. I don't know. We're going to make sure we have lunch, we'll hang out. I'm going to give you guys some critique on your army, so like a real life whip session perhaps. And you could probably even help me judge the best painted single mini, but only if you're not one of the guys putting their mini up for it. So, that's a damn cool price. That's going to be given away over that weekend. The Rival Crafts logo is there because as we've done before, we're going to be giving away some amazing Rival Crafts basing kits. I've ordered them today. Sarah's going to be getting her creative juices flowing. Be sure we've got some epic stuff for you guys. We've also got our usual £50 hobby voucher giveaway. And then one lucky subscriber gets a mini painted by me of their choice out of these three. We've got a Harlequin Shadow Seer. A couple of guys here started picking up the Harleys. Seven games. My bad. We've got Molog the Troll from the Molog's Mob. Shades by a kit. This guy just looks sick. I love him. He's got so much character. He's got a really derpy little, little face. He's squashing the frog. What's not to like? And if you don't like the thought of winning either of those two, well, we've got something for everybody. Because if you don't like those, you can opt instead to have the contents of the mystery box. Kmart MT, thank you for that follow. So, in here is a miniature from my collection. It could be anything. It could be limited edition, could be out of production, could be just a, a cool mini. It could be Blood Bowl, it could be 40k, it could be Sigma, Underworlds, Warcry, you name it. it. Might not even be GW. But it's a gamble because it might just be a scenic base. It might be a grot. Anything could be in this box. The only rule is it must fit wholly within this box. There is a mini in there. I've packed it in carefully so there's no noise. And then there is more. We still have one other giveaway that weekend, which is after I went through all of my paints to set up my new vertical storage solution that we've got here, I discovered I had a load of paints, a 
and I mean like a load of paints that I was either never, never going to use or had duplicates of, such as both of these entirely full pots of Dalarani ink. We've got Secret Weapon in here. We've got G-Dubs. That's a full Evil Sun Scarlet. We've got P3. We've got everything. Vallejo Air Metallics. Army Painter. You name it. Somewhere in here, there's probably some of that company's paint. We're going to give away this entire box of paint that weighs over a kilo. Which means if you live outside the UK, I may ask for some help with the shipping depending on what it's going to come to. But if you live in the UK, I'll post it to you. Or you can just come and collect it. Whatever. So we've got 14-ish prizes to give away that weekend. I'll find one more to round it out to an eat. We've got 15. It's not there. Where did I put you? There. Because this Necron, in the old color scheme I was going to paint, GW's current Necron color scheme, is also going to be given away. So we've got our 15 prizes. That's not bad. So that is not this weekend. I'm at a tournament. That is next weekend. So the 29th and 30th of the month. Make sure you follow here. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, Facebook, all that sort of shit. Exclamation point social for a list of links. Because that's where all the news is going to be going. You guys are getting on the sort of early doors hype train announcement right now. Going to be formally announcing all of that sort of stuff on Instagram over the next day or two. Once I finish putting together the promotional material. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. You want that shiny boy? He's a very cool shiny boy. And it's a bank holiday. So Mondays, I don't even have to book Monday off work. Oh, God. I was, I honestly didn't know it was a bank holiday. And I was just going to full man mode it and work on Monday anyway after doing the stream with maybe like three hours work. <laughs> three hours sleep. There might not even be three hours work if that was the case. But so happy that that's a bank holiday. Whew. Right, here's our orange rust going down now. So this is going to get put on, and in the action of us applying this to the mini, that's going to help us blend these together. We're not wet blending, because the paint is dry. We're dry blending, clearly. That's not a thing. What we're going to do, zoom out just a touch. Just take some of this paint and then do everything we've just done again. <laughs> Notice how that's changed just a little. A little bit more sort of fiery color to it. My wife has just asked how I can get excited by what you said. I think she needs to go. <laughs> Listen, woman, out! <laughs> Don't do that. Divorces cost a lot of money. I can promise you that is the case. <laughs> Mrs. Pearl Jam. Just want to say that for us absolute geeks and nerds that love our mini wargaming, that's like having an entire weekend EastEnders omnibus for you. Okay? But like now you're, you're feeling the level. Maybe a chase of Coronation Street. What's that really shit American one? I forget. Well, they're all really shit, but. Man. <laughs> the one that's usually used as an example for this sort of thing. I don't know. Days of Our Lives or something? Was that the thing? I don't know. I think we need a straw poll on if Miss Pearl Champ should go. That sounds like a little fucking uh, 
like she got disappeared comment that's Lee you're, you're sinister mate I guess that Mrs. Johnsonator is on thin fucking ice, my pedigree chum. And I shall be under it when it breaks. Name that film. Super Bowl. I don't, don't understand that. Oh, I see what you mean. I love the Super Bowl. Love the Super Bowl. NFL season starting again soon. Are my team going to be as shit as they were last year? Popular opinion says more than likely because they've been shit every year for the last... twelve years. Go Ravens! Get out of my chat. You're banned. Immediately disappear. I don't care what you put in the whip from now on. It's shit. It's shit. It's shit. It's shit. That's all you're getting. That's all the feedback you're going to get now. Ravens. Fucking Ravens. No. Just going to say. I do actually really like the Ravens. And especially back in the days of uh, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, playing for the Ravens. Loved watching the Ravens play. Because Smash Mouth football is what gets me like excited about watching American football which is why back in the days of like Brian Erlacher in the Bears defense I was a Bears fan as well love watching the Bears Crooked Grin has guessed it my heart belongs to the fucktards in orange and black who are absolutely incapable of a winning season it seems Brown. A Browns fan. There are Browns fans? No, you're talking shit now. Yeah, I've been a Bengals fan since I was like 19, so nearly 20 years now. And in that time, we've made it to the playoffs a couple of times, and we've never made it past the first round. And the one year we could have gone all the way with Carson goddamn Palmer as our quarterback. Kimi Von Olufsen dirty tackled the shit out of him, basically ending his career. I know he's back, I know he's playing, but Carson Palmer now and Carson Palmer then are two very different things. So, that, that was the end. How do you how strike the NFL? <laughs> I never even thought of it like that. God, that, the Bengals predate my obsession with Hazard Strikes, but maybe they secretly formed the start of it. Now, the reason I love the Bengals is because I used to watch Monday Night Football when I came back from working the club I was working in. I worked in a nightclub between the ages of like 17 and 22. Um, I had great fun doing it. You know, it was. It was cool, but it just basically paid the bills while I was in sick form. So I was working while I was at school uh, and in university. Uh, I'll tell you now, finishing work at 4 a.m., going home, getting like two hours sleep, if that, getting up, going to school and doing classes really does stretch your ability to understand math equations. Like My A-level maths was the one thing I was actually really good at at school and even I was having having issues then because uh, we were getting around to calculus at that point and my dyslexia doesn't do very well for calculus but mechanical maths I was I was like fucking Timmy from the pinball wizard genius with that um, but yeah I loved the Bengals because when you watch Monday Night Football the, the one show they were on they were behind because they're the Bengals. This is a common place to be when you're a Bengals fan, is behind. Uh, but they still played with absolute heart. Absolute heart. This was back when uh, Ocho Cinco was not quite the loudmouth dickhead that he became. 
but unfortunately has always been a bit of a loud mouth dickhead. Uh, we had a brilliant running back. Uh, John Kittner was our quarterback. Carson Palmer was second string and out Sean Kittner. Lance Lemon was cheering since Megatron left. They haven't ever really been worth cheering, but yeah, fair. Hasbro was there, just didn't realise, just subconsciously drawn to them. They are the most metal thing ever in the world. Love Hazard. So. Right, let's just pop this guy back together for a sec. And you'll see the effect of that battle that we just had. It's made him look a lot more sort of real and part of the environment. Now, it's still very cartoony because that's my jam. I, this is my style of painting and I love it when it's bright and bold and brash and absolutely just awesome. Yes, I've heard of the Bills. I've never seen a Bills game though. But that little bit of battle damage just helped ground him a little bit, tie him into the battlefield a little. We've still got all of this to do. We've got some gold to do. We should need to get some verdigree going on for. We've got a load to do on the base itself. We should get the verdigree done now. But we probably won't get anything more than that done. We're probably not even going to get to the gold highlights, unfortunately. We're running out of time. Because we're having so much fun chatting. I'll tell you about the awesome stuff that's coming up on the stream over the next couple of weeks. So verdigree. In that box of paint over there, there is a pot of the Games Workshop uh, Here's How You Paint Verdigree Technical Paint, which is one of the worst things you could ever use, as far as I'm concerned. It's Nylac Oxide is not good, right? You have a pigment that is actually quite rough ground you'll notice it, it clumps uh, on your brush and you've got a solution a medium that is in that is too thin to hold a paint that's that thick and I believe what they were trying to do is come up with something where the pigment that's in the paint uh, would for the most part clump around the area you applied it and the medium would run off and give you like streaks of oxidized brass whatever I don't like it at all I think it's fucking terrible if I'm honest here's why let's go for this could be the right one no well, actually yeah fuck it why not we just grab that so we just grabbed any greenish turquoisey blue that we saw I was going for emerald by P3 which might be this one Eldritch rather was going for that. Slightly more blue. But we'll go with the green on this. It's cool. Oh shit, actually, what did I do on those? More green. That's fine. We're then going to grab some sickly skin. Also from P3. Absolutely one of the colours that everyone should get. It's super, super useful for just about everything. I'm just going to put a dot of both of these on our palette. Now, if you Google a load of pictures of like oxidized brass, that's a good one. It happens to brass quite a lot. Um, rusted copper, all these sorts of things. If it's something that's been taken care of, then the rust will sit in small crevices. So when I worked for a bank, we had these big brass door handles, right? They look awesome. Really, really old building in Cheltenham. So it's also a posh building because Cheltenham. Uh, and everyone had to take it in turns to clean those. And all you had to do was get some brass on a cloth and give it a good going. But you'd never get into the, the really sort of deepest crevices. So where you've got like a door handle that's set in like this nice uh, crenellated brass setting never quite get into those areas and so they'd start to develop a patina and they'd obviously been developing this patina over maybe even a hundred years right and so you want to have the precision to put your verdigris into those places what you don't want to do is take a brush 
put it into something that's too wet so it blows your bristles out which means you've got no control and if you try and put a little amount on the brush because it dries on a brush and because the the pigment in the paint is too coarse it clumps at the end and you get dry tip so it's no good for you like you fucked both ways on that is the, the thing I'm trying to say go get lucky for the good green stuff mostly you get it run, turning into a black oxide yeah but that doesn't really matter not for what we're doing here I get what you're saying though you know, there's many different ways of doing weathering on something like this it doesn't have to be green but green's a kind of iconic look uh, so with copper you get green much more regular than anything else now we've obviously not painted these copper we've painted them gold and some clever dick is going to say but gold doesn't rust Jay well let me tell you this this is a gold coloured mineral that is completely unique to the planet Bindivaji and actually does rust because of prevalence of the acid rain caused by onion bargies in the air haunted channel thank you for that big old host dude awesome thank you so much so we're going to take some of that cyberite green which is just the first greeny turquoisey jadish color that we picked up get a load of water in there and thin it down a bit not going to turn it into a glaze not going to turn it into a wash we're still keeping it as paint just thin paint guys thank you for that hype consider yourself haunted that's awesome that's so I love that that's a great little tagline man you want a bargy mate I'd kill for an onion bargy right now been on a diet for a while because you know lockdown weight is a thing and today was the first day I considered wearing a belt in my jeans they're still good, you know, still still stay up without need of that. But I was thinking, uh, do I need to wear one today? So, yeah, it's working, it's working. Now what we're gonna do, we've got our nice little greenish paint. Just gonna carefully paint in some of our recesses. We can do a little bit of streaking with it as well. But we're in control of this. And this is the important part. Whereas that Nylac Oxide shit, you're kind of half in control and half hoping it turns out well. And for those of you that are just looking to get a mini slapped on the table, nice and quick, sure, go for it. Uh, you know, This lesson that we're doing here on weathering maybe isn't for you then. But for those of you that are thinking, well, actually, I, I, I give a shit about this and I really want to do a, a banging job this is the way I'd recommend doing any kind of verdigris on your greeny sort of area of the spectrum. So if you're doing copper, bronze, brass, weird alien gold from the planet Bindivaji, whatever it is, this is the way I'd do it. And we're just getting into sunny areas where it would naturally form. So we've got all this barbed wire here, so there'd be a lot of pooling, collecting water and acid onion bhaji rain that's clearly going to be a thing forever now onion bhaji acid rain that's that's now the way things work on the top of this we get a load collecting in around again that barbed wire i'm not going to be too precious with this because we're also going to get some tufts up here we're going to get a load of um uh, uh, pigments put on here as well just some green and stuff like that to help show some little bits of uh, natural growth from plants and so on mosses but this is a lot more controllable for that GW stuff I drink that rain with mango chutney snow oh yeah mm, I can get behind that go deep in the Bacora mines. Mm. 
Oh shit, we need to go to that bloody Indian in, up in Mansfield. I need to try and convince Mikey to book a table. That was so good. So that, at the house on events, the food is good. The food is real good. Um, not as good as the food at my events, and that's not me being a shit, but the menu for the event that's coming on the 13th of September, the Bad Luck Brawl, the menu has two options. If you're veggie, there are uh, buffalo chicken wings that are made out of seitan. So it's like buffalo chicken wings, obviously, in inverted commas, but seitan, seitan, whatever, chicken wings. If you're not a veggie, there's brisket. And I can't wait for this brisket. Both mains are served with the following four sides. Four sides! Not one, four fries because you know, obviously brisket and wings fries green beans goes great with brisket love me some green beans I forgot on one of them shit that's really embarrassing oh damn it Edward where are you my fucking chat history uh, that's the one there's a mac and cheese. Oh, that's it, it's corn on the cob, of course. How can I forget corn on the cob? So corn on the cob, mac and cheese, fries, and green beans. Those are the four sides. And then, for dessert, beignets. Fresh made beignets. Those of you who don't know what a beignet is, it's basically a square donut covered in powdered sugar. Oh, it's like diabetes, straight to your it's going to be good. So the food at my events is banging, but food at Hellstorm events is also good. That's where we started out. The last Hellstorm event, we went to an Indian restaurant in the evening, and that was the best Indian food I have had in, I don't know how long. Easily more than a decade. It was so, so good. So much flavor. Exactly the right amount of heat. I had a biryani where the veg curry, mmm, mmm, that was, that was something else. Right, all I've done now is I've mixed a little bit of that sickly skin in with our Cyberite Green. And now you can get a little bit of highlight going on. And look at how much extra that does for our verdigree. Keep this small. You don't want it all to be this color unless you decide that you want a bright verdigree, in which case use this as your base and then highlight it even more. But that adds quite a lot to what we've got going on here. I have realized now we start doing this, I forgot to highlight all of these areas, but we'll come back and do that in a sec. But look at this, this is very dark, it's very muted, and that's fine, but Let's just stipple some of this in on the inside of there, knock it up a notch. Now it's, it's looking good. It's looking real good. Biryani is my favorite Indian dish. It's, oh, it's just good. There is an Indian takeaway uh, that's a pub near where Nick lives. Um, it's a something arms. No, I've forgotten. That that actually rivals this place in Mansfield. But that was more kind of more Indian fusion than Indian because you wouldn't necessarily have uh, some of what was on that menu at an Indian restaurant, like a traditional Indian restaurant. It's kind of more a mix of Indian and like American grill. Which think about that for a second, right? Oh, they're chicken wings. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I can't remember the name of the place. I want to say it's like the, the Bradford Arms, but that doesn't sound right. But yeah. 
Vista. Oh. Trying to carry in Vindaloo. So I, I don't like Vindaloo. And I've eaten a file. Back, back when I was working in a Mexican restaurant, one of our, our chilies was hotter than the file. And so I had plenty of practice. And then when someone dared me to eat a file, I was like, yeah, sure, man, whatever. And just bashed it down. And I, I can't eat heat like that anymore. I'm, I'm very much out of practice. Um, I've got no intention on having the uh, chili ring, as we say, uh, to, to that level ever again. But there wasn't any real flavour in either the Vindaloo or the Fal. And I, I am very much somebody that when I'm eating something, I want it to taste outstanding. I don't want it to just be hot for the sake of being hot. Uh, local Indian does a good biryani and a banging chicken tikka shashlik boona. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I get behind that. One of my favourites is um, Gobi Alu Sag. That's, that's a real light dish. Uh, cauliflower, spinach, and potato. That's, that's pretty banging. And you can get a lot of flavor out of that, but it still stays light. One thing I've always wanted to try but never had is uh, paneer, uh, Indian cheese. I've, I've never seen it on a menu where I've, I've picked it up. You need to find a better vindaloo. Again, mate, I, I think you get more flavor out of a good madras than you do out of a good vindaloo. And I don't care about the heat. Like I said, I, my, my tolerance level used to be extraordinarily high. Uh, to the point where we do shots of hot sauce. We just sit there eating like handfuls of jalapenos and stuff like that. But uh, And jalapenos aren't, aren't hot. Like when you start doing it with habaneros, then you know you've got a problem, right? Um, but yeah, nev never tried paneer. I always wanted to. It's just a. I don't know what a good paneer is meant to taste like. So all I can do is just try a few bad ones along the way, I guess. But we'll see. Uh, you look at this banging banana curry with just the right amount of heat. It's so smooth. I can get behind that. I, I like fruit and spice. Uh, things like. Um, uh, fuck. The big savory bananas. You cook them a lot in Cuba, in Mexico. Uh, plantain. Plantain. Love plantain. Plantain frito is just epic. CJ, you spam that as much as you want, brother. Keep that shit going all day long. Everyone should check out the Alliance Armory. Plantains are so good. They, they really are, mate. They really are. One of the best ways I've had plantain done. Uh, I learned how to cook this in Cuba. We were on a, a little um, like day excursion, me and my ex. And the one job she had was remember the fucking sun cream on a snorkeling trip where I went literally fucking coke can red that that was what my skin looked like at the end of that day it was not good but you take a plantain you want a maduro not the green plantain you want the majority the aged plantain it's starting to go a bit brown uh, you cut it in half after peeling half of it so you, you sort of trim the end off cut down the peel so you can bring that down Slice off half the plantain, that goes for a different dish. Then you take the peel and you fold it over the rest of the plantain again. So it's got like a double wall of peel going on. You chuck that on the barbecue. Uh, in this case, the barbecue was like a fucking oil drum that was cut in half. It was a proper ghetto ass barbecue on this tiny little island, population zero. And holy shit, by the time that's cooked, you've got the sweetest, nicest, it's like banana mash on the inside of that. Mm. 
Mm. Super good. Snow him. Peace out, man. Thanks for stopping by. Hopefully we'll see you again. And Muakin. Thank you for that follow. So you get to places like this, you can make sure you get the degree in the corners where the uh, the brick meets the the trim essentially. We're looking for any surface where may where rain may accumulate. The onion bhaji rain, which prompted this entire conversation about food. For anyone that's new to the stream, we talk about food a lot here. I used to be a chef. I love cooking. I love me some food. I've got some friends coming down for the event I'm holding here locally on the 13th. They're staying the Saturday night. One of them's a pescatarian, which means he's getting salmon, but the other guy's getting steak. Nick, he's getting steak and mash. Nick's now wishing it wasn't his wife's birthday that day and he could have accidentally forgotten about it and just bought a ticket anyway, I'm sure. Um, don't forget your wife's birthday. I never did that. But definitely don't don't forget it. Banana mash sounds pretty angry. It, mate, it so is. It's so... Simondo, I'm, I'm always hungry. It's because I'm losing weight at the moment. That's why I'm always fucking hungry. Oh, fried plantain with cinnamon and honey. I can deal with that, but I'm not really a big cinnamon guy. And as for Denver, I should be there in February visiting a friend. But it depends entirely on whether the LVO is cancelled or not. Um, but my brother lives in Denver. He's not really, well, I say my brother. You know, everyone's got those friends that aren't friends, they're your family. And he's that to me. Uh, he was best man at my wedding in Bali and is one of the most epic dudes in the world just flat out love the guy so my January into February super intercontinental road trip which is going to involve no driving whatsoever from me uh, is Vegas for the LVO at the end of January and then a little inter-country flight over to Denver. Go see Josh. Hang out, drink, smoke stogies. Just spend time with my fam. Can't wait. But if the RBO is cancelled, then it'll be the following year. So. Brother from another mother. Exactly that, man. He's been going through a lot this year, so it'd be really good to be able to get out there and, you know, spend some quality time. So all of this rough area where, to try and help the uh, barbed wire take, we ended up putting a load of um, basing particulate in there. Because it just was not having any of it. It really, really wasn't. And it was fucking annoying me. But to get that to, to take, we ended up doing this. So we're going to make all of that a very rusted, encrusted with crap uh, surface. There should be... There's some more here, but we're going to make all of that like uh, moss and lichen. So, there's always a plan. Always a plan. And we're nearly at the point where we're going to go into the whip. So, if you guys have got something that you would like to show off, something that you've been working on, maybe something that you've finished, estimation point Discord, come and join our Discord community. We've got a pretty banging group of people over there on Discord now, so it's a nice place to be. I'm not the most active person there, but I do read everything. I just don't always have the time to chat. Uh, but go to there, 
go to the work in progress gallery and upload a couple of picks. Ideally no more than three because I, I do like making sure that everyone gets their fair shout. And I always feel really bad about skipping stuff that people have taken the time and effort to upload. So three at the most. But let's have a look and see what you guys have been doing. We'll offer some feedback if necessary. There might be no feedback to give. We've had a couple of things go into the whip that have been beyond extraordinarily good. So there's every chance that could still be the thing. Uh, and then this dude, we'll put down, we'll come back to him on Thursday night. We want to get him finished before the weekend. We'll finish off the weathering on this uh, pole for his base, all of this stuff going on. We'll get that done as well. We've got some basing work to do. We've got some powders to do. And that probably isn't going to take very long. So what we will then do is work on our, I've lost them, prototype bases for the weekend after when we do that humongous Necron army. 2,505 points to do. No, put in whatever you want, man. The, the only rules are, don't just post links to Instagram, post the image, because that's just being lazy. And mostly it's because I don't want to click a link. Uh, Twitch has got some very definite rules on what you can and cannot show on your stream. And so clicking links is kind of a no for me. Um, that's kind of it. No, no links. By all means, put your Instagram name in, you know, or give us a link to your Instagram so we can go follow it at a later date, but we won't go to Instagram to look at your stuff. So let's go have a look. Let's whip it out. And this was today, here we go. This is Crown Blade. The cam is driving me around the bend. It's shit, that's it, it's shit. No more, Raven's fan, it's shit. Get out, you're banned. Uh, I understand what you mean about the camera because everything that looks dark and it looks dark because it's trying to compensate for the white balance behind it. Super, super hard. It took me ages to get this thing fucking set up because I don't know cameras very well at all. What you've got is solid though, man. I really like this chapter. The Fleur de Lis you've got there, was that a like a sculpted thing or is that something that you've put a transfer down or freehanded it looks like it's embossed from the mini so that's a really really good bit of freehand or it, it is sculpted what's in the glass uh apple juice actually um it tastes remarkably like havana club seven year but it is apple juice who, who knew uh, usually it's apple juice that tastes like varying different flavours of scotch or bourbon. But it's just apple juice. Crown Blade. I like it, dude. Genuinely. Um, I appreciate the Mini is probably brighter IRL than it is now. Uh, and that would be my only real uh, criticism of it, is that parts of it are just a little muted. But... I love what you've done with the sword. Nice little faint glow around that uh, activator, the, the power field generator, whatever it is. Um, the yellow for the helmet looks extremely pale, but I imagine it isn't. The eyes could probably do with being a darker color. I see. Anything. Whenever I do Marines, for the eyes in the helmet, I need to make them stand out a lot. Eyes are an, a, a really important focal point on any miniature, which is why all those Necrons we're doing, we're going to hand paint glowy eyes on 110 minis. It's going to take a while. I hope it's not going to take too long, or I ain't sleeping until we're done. It's going to really bite me in the ass. Um, I'd probably change it from what you've got there to maybe an orange. It would help. It would still match most of the armor, so it wouldn't be like too jarring. But it would really help 
stand out in the the helmet there. And if you went for a dark orange up to a, a brighter peak at the either this end or the, the far end, you know, whichever your choice is, um, that would work really well. Other than that, mate, smashed it. This is, I think, one of the best things that I've seen you paint. So I hope you're happy with them. Sons of Rolo, my whip for the last couple of days. I may have had to nick the TV from the living room as dropped mine. Oh, shit. Hopefully the wife won't notice when she gets home from work. She's going to notice, dude. She, she's going to know. Okay. So I see there's some, some version of a hobby desk being created here. And that's some pretty extreme paint storage. I love the alien head you've got in the background. That's fucking cool. Love that. Yeah, nice desk, dude. I love the cable storage you've got going on there. Uh, sorry, the cable like tidies, rather. That's a big old tank. Looks like it needs a bit of a, a restoration. She did. Yeah. Yeah. Was she happy about it? Because I'm assuming she was less than impressed. What it used to look like. I'm not a line man. I'm going to miss the cigar boxes. See what we got there. Esplendidos. Possibly another box of Esplendidos next to it. The uh, I've never heard of the Rosalona selection of Spania. You know, Party Gas D fours, maybe, probably D fives, based on that. Don Thomas still with some in there. Mate, where's your humidification? Dude, gotta get sorted on that. My humidor is a 28 bottle wine fridge that has been converted into a humidor to be able to establish the uh, magnificence of my cigar collection. Legion is a good book, yeah. Crazy Ang, some of my whip. I see quad last cannon dreadnoughts. Grim. Absolute grim. Crown Blades, you did. I said it was very good. Like, so the highlights were the eyes are probably too pale. I understand your photo quality is where it is because you're having issues with the camera, so don't worry about the brightness and vividness of it. Um, but change the eyes to orange, and I think it's probably the best thing I've seen you paint. Those were the highlights. You, you've got to put it back tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Not surprised, mate. Love these dreads, though, mate. Big fan. I would suggest running them. One pair of twin lads and a big fist. I think that's a good way, but quad lads contemptors are currently like the flavor of the month dreadnought. So keep them up, mate. They look banging as always. Getting that scenery down. Mate, you're making good work on this scenery as well. I paint mine. <laughs> like I'm almost not joking. I've got a fuck ton of this GW scenery that I am probably never going to get the chance to paint. So, you know, <laughs> if you want to do something, <laughs> uh, looks all right, that dude. It's it's hard to work on scenery when it's this detailed, though, right? Because there's so many bits that could do with like an extra little bit of um, like shadow or an extra little bit of detail. I and mean, if you do all of that, never ending story of scenery. You need more. We always need more scenery. That's the way it is. The Johnsonator. Mate, I've been loving watching you paint this guy. So taking 
a little bit of inspiration right out of Rhino 72 with that purple and green. Mm. Yours is a, a magenta, I guess, rather than purple, but it's so good, mate. The blend on your feathers is lovely. I love, obviously, how vivid this is. Super, super bright. It demands that you look at it. And this is why I love these high contrast, ultra vivid minis. They capture your attention and hold it there. This is looking awesome. What's it for? Just a, a single one off or? It is brilliant, mate. Everyone, make sure you follow the Johnsonator on Instagram. Just a random bit of a palette cleanser. And yeah, I did notice the eyes, mate. They look good. They look good. Got a proper lizard pupil in there as well. Excellent work. Gobbo Lee L. We've got a beholder. Maybe. A D&D &D mini. I've seen this one painted a few times. Eeny Minis were painting one uh, not all that long ago. Oh, she was giving them away. She painted them already. She was giving them away. There was one that was um, magnetized all the tentacles and stuff. I never met one of these in D&D. &D. Not in uh, pen and paper D&D. On a computer game D&D &D I did. Very cool, man. Oh, yeah, here we go. This guy's sick. Let's get a little close up. I think you could work a little on some of the shadows around his face. Um, but you need to thin whatever you're going to use to try and darken those shadows down a lot. And the only reason I say it is because. Whilst you've got shadows there that are prominent, you could do with just maybe, because some of them are quite thick, getting right in. So let's use my uh, big crenellated forehead as a, a thing, right? So there's a big shadow here. But because we've got a scale difference between my lumpy meathead and your dude over here, if you've got something right in, right at the very edge of that line to really darken that bit down you'd snap a lot more of his features into focus which from a, a picture from here they're not super sharp and that's the only thing that I would suggest to change I like him a lot though and the base rim get that base rim tidied up nobody likes a sloppy rim job it's got to be tidy Here is again. He's awesome, mate. I've nearly picked this guy up more than once, actually. Hey, hey, cool table and a weird boy. Mate, that's... You can't call Martin weird. I mean, you can and it's accurate, but we love him. So, you know. But this is the Necron table. That's good. Have you had many games on it in ninth? I'm trying to work out if I made like the uh, trees as um, dense terrain. And you got a couple of Eldar bits there as well, I think. Uh, whether that would be enough to really fill the table. I think it would be pretty close. Yeah, exactly. Because you've got a nice big area footprint on those. I think if you got Dawn of War deployment on that, maybe it would feel a little sparse depending on what you're playing. Oriken, peace dude.
Yeah, I think it made me feel a little sparse. For me, certainly, I'd be shitting myself if I got Dawn of War deployment on that. Because that's planet bowling ball to me. For us, uh, 10 by 6. Yeah, it makes sense. But I like it, dude. Big Al is on the Dawn of War line. Yes, I've just noticed your table shrinkiness. That's what we're calling them, shrinkiness. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I could hide something behind that. Who knows? Who knows? Lovely terrain though, mate. I am sorely tempted to pick up another set of terrain that I don't actually need. But do one, especially considering Necron Army is coming. Mm. Also, each sleep game repeat, banging t-shirt, love that. Boxed up a full Ecronian table prototype. So look at that, collapses down to next to nothing. It's good. It is good, man. See, I love the fact that you can collapse it down so well. I mean, with these little uh, pylon looking things that you've got going on, you're never going to get that like full uh, one tiny box mode again, but so useful. Here we go, last shot. There's a table from a height. It's super solid, mate. Every single part of that has got a proper footprint as well. In ninth edition, that is super, super important. Also, while you're on their website, check out the Sprylo set. If you look down in the bottom, well, sort of the left-hand side there, you'll see a load of uh, terrain. It's made out of a spray can, like a standard GW size spray can. A couple of MDF bits and pieces. I tell you now, those are awesome. Because they block line of sight. They are, what, seven and a bit inches tall. I've got some that are nine inches tall because some of the uh, spray cans I used to prime the terrain were a little taller. They work, man. They work super well. Nice, man. Very, very nice. Can't wait to see that painted up. It's going to look banging. Right, that was it. A rather short whip tonight. We've normally got a lot more in there than that. So hopefully you guys weren't too disappointed by our little whip session. One more time. This is the night we've done tonight. We're going to carry on with him on Thursday night stream. So live at 9 on Thursday to do a little bit more of the weathering, get the base sorted out, and then we'll be working on our prototype bases for our Necron army. Our Necron army, by the way, which is all of this. We're going to paint the entirety of the minis that you see there, start to finish, in 48 hours or less. Dear God, please let it be less. If it's more, then it's more. Please let it be less. <laughs> there are 110 minis in that set. It's basically three Indon boxes, a converted Cryptek, which is right down there at the front to the left of the picture of the Royal Warden, and five Immortals. 2,000... 505 points over that weekend stream which is the 29th and the 30th of this month we've got all our usual giveaways such as a 50 pound hobby voucher a mini painted by me in the color scheme of your choice and shipped to you anywhere in the world we've got a box of paint that we're giving away we've got 10 basing kits from the legendary exclamation point tufts rival crafts the best gaming and basing accessories in the business. And of course we have one ticket to the 250 man, seven game, not eight game, seven game, three day long super major in Utrecht in November. You'll have to get yourself out there, you'll have to pay for your own hotel accommodation. Appreciate that. We're gonna give you the ticket for free and then you and I will have lunch or dinner 
we'll definitely hang out have a few beers and if you're not entering the best painted single mini painting competition where you could win an airbrush an Iowata Eclipse airbrush then you can help me judge it but you should enter and try to win that airbrush because they are banging uh, how many warriors? 60 there's 60 warriors 3 giraffes 6 murder buckets 5 immortals 9 scorepeck destroyers 3 plasma sites, 2 plasmancers 1 cryptic, 1 lord sorry 1 overlord 18 scarab bases 2 scorepeck lords that's it so Welshie it's all good man watch the highlights on Instagram there's going to be plenty of updates throughout the weekend there's also going to be every single minute of that stream up on YouTube as well I'm going to paint all of those up in that dark Terminator style colour scheme I can't wait it's going to be banging thank you to everyone that joined in tonight let's now go and find somebody on Twitch we can pass the hobby love on to see who we've got slow fuses on the captain's on we raided captain not long ago scabby rooster it's a name i've not seen for a little while malev we raid malev a lot we raided two dorks one brush not that long ago either what's scabby rooster doing don't know it's really really difficult to see that it's like a weird magnifying glass camera setup Oh wait, he's moved it, now we're going back to a big fucking dragon. That, that'll that do it, that's where we're going. Big dragons with Scabby Rooster. You're not running the credits anymore. We're going to run the credits now. Oh shit, I haven't queued him up on the thing. But yes, we're going to run the credits. But it's good to run the credits. You guys that have subscribed get all of the cool credit in the credits. See, see what we did there? <laughs> so the raid will start as soon as the credits are finished. Thank you very much to everyone for chilling out tonight. Love you all. Humongous thanks to the two amazing streamers that raided as well. Peace out, everyone.